Hi everyone, welcome to JP Infotech. Now we are going to discuss about the project packet hiding methods for preventing selective jamming attacks. This paper falls under the category of 2012 IEEE Transaction on Dependable and Secure Computing. You can download this base paper and document from our blogspot that is www.jpinfotech.blogspot.com. Here you can see the project title. Here you can see the link for downloading the base paper. Here you can see the link for downloading the abstract of this project. Even if you click this title of the project, you can see the description about this project. Now moving to the base paper. This packet hiding method for preventing selective jamming attacks falls under the categories of wireless network. So we all know about that wireless network that is these wireless network are open or openness in the nature. So due to this openness, the wireless network are vulnerable to many types of attacks. So as mentioned in the base paper, these wireless network are more vulnerable to denial of service attacks. So now we can see how the attacks is being created and, how, and who is going to create that attacks. So here the A node and the B node. So A node is the source node and B node is the destination node and A node is going to transmit to the B node through wireless communication and the data packets is going to travel in wireless medium. Here J is a person that is a J is a jammer. What he is going to do? He is going to add some bogus data into the packets. So physical data packets. So to prevent this, so this, this to prevent this kind of measures, so we are going to introduce this packet hiding method. So in existing in the existing system, what kind of things they are used? We can see that one. In the existing system, they use conventional anti-jamming techniques rely extensively on spread spectrum communications or some form of jamming evasions. That is, they are slow frequency hopping or spatial resistance. So, due to this kind of thing, it is not sufficient for preventing this kind of selective jamming attacks. So, this, so in this paper, we are going to present some techniques. So, these techniques are come under the category of three techniques. That is, a strong hiding commitment scheme, cryptographic puzzle hiding scheme, hiding based on all or nothing transformation. So, we are going to implement the scheme using these three cryptographic primitives. So, this is our architecture. So, based on this architecture, we are going to have the implementation. Let us see the demo of the project. So, we are going to use NetBeans IDE. First, I am going to run the intermediate server. So, this is the intermediate server. Here, you can see the packet details and traffic signal. So, traffic signal is a dynamic one. It gives the graph of the traffic signal based on the data which we receive. So, first, this is packet details. So, here we have option for block or unblock. Then, we are going to run the node. Here, first I am going to run the first node. So, this node ID is 317. Again, I am going to run another node. So, this node ID is 172. Now, I am going to run the server. This is the server file. Now, First, I'm going to take the node 317. Here you can see the neighbor's node that is 172. And in 172, you can see the neighbor's node 317. You can add how much nodes also, that's not an issue. So whenever the node is added, the neighbor nodes list is being going to be displayed here. Now I'm going to add the file. So you can you can manually type it here the text area or you can just use the open dialog box here I am going to select a file that is jpinfo.txt ok here first I am going to use the normal mode here you can see there are four different methods as I mentioned earlier we are going to use all or nothing transformation cryptographic puzzle strong hiding commitment scheme so first is we are going to use the normal mode so how is going to work let us see in the normal mode before transmitting the data we need to select the leader election so just 
click leader election so now 317 is acted as is going to be act as a leader and now we are going to send the data so just click send so it is intimating that leader node is 317 just go to the intermediate node now it will be asking for an option that is continue with the unblock mode when i'm going to give as then another packet is going to come so that is so here you can see the source ip the destination ip the sequence number the status now you see the traffic signal so as i said earlier it is going to change dynamically based on the packet which is going to receive now go to the server here the message is going to be received right now this is the normal method we are going to use which one which is, which is going to use in case let us see now i am going to transfer a data now i have given a, a sample data called data now i am going to use the normal mode see now in the intermediate node i am going to change the option earlier i used yes continue with the unblock mode yes now i am going to use continue with unblock mode no so once i have been given like this intruder blocked the packet message has been come now the packet has been blocked and we can't receive the data here see the old data is only displayed here the new data is not being displayed here so this is the problem so this is the jammer so now we are going to overcome this problem so this is the existing and we are going now we are going to see the proposed one now we are going to run it again now you see that intermediate as i said earlier node see now the node is 320 again we need to create another node road is 281 again the server now we are going to see the proposed methods so first we need to select the data you can select the data now i'm going to type it manually i have typed all or nothing now i'm going to select the leader election now i'm going to use all or nothing transformation let us see how this method is going to work now i'm going to send the data that for the secret key i'm going to give 1 2 3 now in the intermediate node you can see the data the source ip the destination ip the sequence number of the packet now you can see the traffic signal also now in the destination if i click the destination it acts as a secret key i'm going to give 1 2 3 3 and the message has been received here so now i'm sure you can see the technical details of the alg algorithm type that is ao and all or nothing transformation the secret key the number of packets the secret key path the issue time resolve time packet order so this thing will be coming on the next algorithm let us see how it's going to work now i'm going to use the next one that is cryptographic puzzling method so let us see how this this puzzle method is going to work see after cl clicking this cryptographic puzzle method you can see the expression this is the puzzle this is the puzzle we are going to solve it we need to solve it so here when i'm click the send button it acts for the timeline so it generates actually this cryptographic puzzle method generates two value that is the one is the the expression that is key value and another is the timeline what is this timeline based on this timeline the the receiver should solve the puzzle see i'm going to give 60 seconds now in the server side it acts for the expression i need to answer it within 60 seconds so the puzzle has been solved in time so the message has been received puzzle method which, which is the message which which is which the data has been transferred here now let us see if i'm not going to use a puzzle method block 
this is the sample data which I'm going to transfer using this cryptographic puzzle method now let us see see enter the timeline here I'm going to give the timeline as one second see in the expression I'm going to give the correct one but the timeline is expired so the message is not going to receive because we are going we the user has fixed the timeline so within the timeline we need to solve the puzzle in case if you are not solve the puzzle the data will not be received in the receiver side because it 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 it, it assumes that it is an unauthentic unauthenticated person so based on the timeline this puzzle should be solved in case even in the timeline if you are going to give the wrong puzzle answer then also the data will be blocked so next scheme is the strong hiding commitment scheme so let us see how this method is going to work strong hiding commitment scheme I'm going to give send so it asks for the secret key now I'm going to give JP after giving OK see that's the secret key I'm going to give JP again so the strong hiding scheme has been received here so here here you can see the three different methods in case if I'm going to give the now I'm going to change the data sample data see I'm going to send the data now again thanks for the so I'm giving secret key JP it in the destination side that is in the server side is after the I'm going to give the wrong one JP one so it's, it, it says that it, it's incorrect key so the data is not going to receive in the server side so in these type these t3 techniques we are based on these three three techniques we are going to solve the problem of that selective jamming attack so from these three methods we come to know that we can solve the issue of this selective jamming attacks here you can see the architecture the channel so source coder the, the, so, so, so the source is going to send it through channel encoder interleaver modulator and then it's going to come under D modulator D interleaver channel decoder so with this we can come to know that based on these three type of schemes that is all or nothing transformation cryptographic puzzle method strong hiding commitment scheme based on this physical classification of the packet we can solve the problem of this selective preventing selective jamming attacks thank you